Proverbs talks about in another part of Proverbs, and I can't remember where it was in Proverbs that I read this, but it was talking about, it talked about a few times being mindful of your home and how your home, you know, the types of, I hate to use the word energy because I feel like today it's used in such a weird way sometimes, but what is your house in, in strife or is it full of peace? Our home is our safe haven. It's our place that we should be able to rest and relax. It says better is a dry crust with quietness and a house full of feasting with strife. So, you know, material things come and go, but if you have that peace in your home, it is invaluable. So I guess I want to say, do your best to maintain peace. Also, verse two is just talking about being mindful of your decisions because, you know, if you're not trustworthy, especially over the things of your household, then it says, you know, a wise servant, the person who's got wisdom is the one who will take over and be in charge of that. So, you know, just because you think something is rightfully yours by, you know, birth or whatever, if you don't have that wisdom to take care of it in the way that you should, then you won't, it won't be handled properly. You know, you won't have that uh, ability to take care of it. Whoever mocks the poor insults his maker and the one who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished. This makes me think about, you know, am I doing enough for others? especially those who are less fortunate than me. Am I, and there's always someone who's less fortunate than us. Um, am I doing enough? Whenever we serve and do something for someone else, uh, you know, God says, Jesus says that we are serving him and we are doing for him. This is really interesting because I didn't know this was in the Bible. One thing that my mom said to me recently, she said, I love my kids, but my grandchildren, there's something so special about my grandchildren. And I think that's uh, really cool that this is in the Bible. I didn't even realize that it was there. I really love the next few verses. And I love it because it's difficult to do. We can pray for all the spiritual gifts. We can ask God for, you know, whatever we think we want God to do for us. You know, we can interpret and be prophesize and do everything that we think is spiritual. But when it comes to looking over an offense, if you can, it says whoever covers an offense fosters love. If you can look overlook an offense and move on from that, that's truly what spiritual, that is what spirituality is. That is truly living what God wants us to do. I think it's something that, you know, I'm definitely still working on. I think we all should be continuously, I think we all should be continuously working towards not being so easily offended. So it's a new year. And with that, many try to start new habits. Turning away from offense and not being easily offended is a great habit to start forming. Because honestly, it fosters love. And the reason why I grouped it with these is because a rebuke, a, bu a rebuke strikes deeper into one who has understanding. This is what I'm talking about, you know, this whole time. If you get easily offended and someone's trying to just tell you something that will help you, but instead of you looking at it as help, you get offended. You know, it, it says that a rebuke, so when someone rebukes you, it strikes deeper into one who has understanding, someone who is wise, someone who's open to that constructive criticism than a hundred lashes on a fool. So you're foolish if you don't listen to rebuke and actually grow and learn from it. In the same token, an evil person seeks rebellion. So if you're offended or if someone does something and you seek rebellion instead of focusing on how you could love that person and letting God take care of that part, it says a cruel messenger will be sent against him. So I think these are all related to offense. Wow, this is filled with so much wisdom, <laughs> obviously, but um, starting strife is like letting water out of a dam. So stop it before a quarrel breaks out. 
So if you have an issue, right, and I don't want to say that, you know, all issues should be swept under the rug. You can address an issue and talk to someone about it without starting strife in an argument. Notice this doesn't say anything about, you know, avoiding conflict or avoiding Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Notice that the word doesn't say anything about, you know, being honest with someone. In fact, it talks about it in a positive way. You know, sometimes we do need to rebuke someone, tell them something that they need to hear for their own good. However, the way that you say it is so vital. It's it's just as important as what you're going to say, because you can start strife unintentionally. Maybe you have good intentions to tell them something. Hey, this isn't working or whatever. Um, maybe you wanted to address something, but the way that you addressed it is like letting water out of a dam. So stop it before a quarrel breaks out. So, you know, there are issues in, you know, whether it's friendships, marriages, whatever relationship you have that sometimes you just need to talk about and address. It just has to be addressed. However, you can bring it up in a way that won't cause so much of an issue where it causes division or arguments. And it's very similar to verse 19. Build a strong gate. Verse 27 and 28, um, really good. Sometimes it's better to not say anything (laughs) than to think that you're um, being wise and sharing that wisdom with someone when in fact, you probably should just say nothing. Even if what you're going to say will help that person, if you don't have that type of relationship with that person, or if you have a feeling that they will not receive it in a way that's positive, then, you know, just say nothing, (laughs) you know? It reminds me of this verse right here. Why give fool to a money to buy wisdom? when he has no desire to learn, Um, you know, and sometimes it's better to say nothing and to keep silent in order to avoid the strife. So I feel like that all kind of ties into each other. But um, yeah, that is all I have for this chapter. Please let me know what you learned. Um, This has been really interesting and I've been really enjoying doing it in this way in my journaling Bible. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But for the month of January 2021, I post every single day at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.